The University of Otago here in New Zealand recently released research study findings that concluded that alcohol was causing more harm to New Zealanders than other substances such as tobacco, synthetic cannabis, and even causing more harm than methamphetamine. In episode 1, we covered exactly what the study meant and why alcohol was ranked at number 1 as the most harmful psychoactive substance. In episode 2 today, we're looking at the biological aspect and the effect alcohol has on your body and your organs every time you drink it. Episode 1 wasn't an easy video to talk about, episode 2 is going to be even more difficult to talk about, but we've got to get it done. So let's get straight into it. Ventura Nutrition. Fun fact! What's up guys, I'm Roger Ventura, qualified nutritionist and resident supplement nerd here at Ventura Nutrition with over 20 years experience in the health and fitness industry. Today is episode 2 of our 3 part alcohol video series discussing the fact that alcohol was recently ranked as New Zealand's most harmful drug with almost 80% of the country using it. Now, before we get into episode two, I'd like to remind you guys that I am just the messenger and I'm simply delivering the information about the human body and the research findings within the study from Dr. Rose Crossan and Dr. Joe Bowden. Sometimes when I do videos on sensitive topics like vaping or alcohol, it tends to trigger some people and they tend to get pretty colorful in the comments section. I'd like to welcome anybody to comment down below with your thoughts and opinions even if you don't agree with what's being said or what's found in the research studies. Just keep in mind that I'm simply reading meta-analytical stats from institutes like the University of Otago or global governing bodies like the World Health Organization. If you guys choose not to acknowledge any of this information, that's totally fine and I respect each and every single one of you. If you guys haven't seen episode 1 of this 3 part video series, I'm going to leave a link at the end of this video and I'm going to have a link in the show notes down below, so feel free to click that and go ahead and check out episode 1 where we discuss the exact findings of Dr. Crossan and Dr. Bowden on the harmful effects of alcohol and our society. So today, we're going to be talking about what goes on inside your body every time you ingest or drink alcohol. And this is something I felt really needed to be explored, as I really don't feel like the mainstream media do enough to explain or illustrate what goes on inside the human body when it comes to this substance. After all, as we discussed in episode 1, the New Zealand government makes close to $1.2 billion a year from alcohol sales, as well as $1.38 billion from tobacco sales. When there's that much money to be made every year, that doesn't leave a lot of motivation for the government or the media to slow down your consumption of alcohol or cigarettes. But how much alcohol is healthy? And is there any truth to those theories? As disheartening as this may be for anybody who drinks wine or beer or any kind of alcohol and expects benefits for their health, I'm sorry to tell you, but on January 4th, 2023, Funnily enough, right in the peak of the New Year's party season, the World Health Organization released new evidence and new research findings that there is no safe amount of alcohol and that any beverage with any amount of alcohol in it puts you at risk of disease and or illness. To add to this, Dr. Jerry Delvin from the New Zealand Heart Foundation said that these myths about alcohol having health benefits have completely zero basis in scientific evidence. And after researchers at the Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard examined the health records of over 371,000 patients, they found that any amount of alcohol consumption was associated with a greater risk of illness and disease. And just to be clear, in these studies, a standard typical drink was defined as the classic standard of 14 grams of alcohol, which equates to 5 ounces or 140 grams of wine, 12 ounces or 340 grams of beer, with 5% alcohol that is, or a 1.5 ounce or 42 gram shot of distilled alcohol like rum or whiskey. The International Agency for Research on Cancer and the World Health Organization class alcohol as a group 1 carcinogenic cancer causing chemical. This is the highest group for chemicals that cause cancer in the human body and it's the same group that consists of substances such as tobacco, asbestos, and even radiation. Alcohol has been proven to cause at least seven types of cancer, if not more, including two of the most common cancers in the world, one being breast cancer, and the second being New Zealand's most common and fatal type, bowel cancer. When you drink alcohol, the alcohol travels down your esophagus into your stomach. Approximately 25% of the alcohol absorbs into your bloodstream through the stomach, 
with the remaining 75% absorbing into your bloodstream further on through the small intestine. Once the alcohol hits the bloodstream, the body will send it straight to the liver to start the breakdown and detoxification process as it tries to get rid of this poison toxic substance. Now inside the liver, there's actually an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase or ADH that's specifically there to break down alcohol and convert it into ethanol. The problem with the breakdown of alcohol in the liver and converting it into ethanol is that once it converts to ethanol, it then converts into a substance called acetylaldehyde, which happens to be a class 2b carcinogenic cancer causing chemical according to the World Health Organization. This means that the high levels of acetylaldehyde in the liver has a high probability of causing cancer in human beings, specifically increasing your chances of developing cancers in the esophageal tract, the large intestine, and breast cancers. Some of the other negative side effects of having high levels of acetylaldehyde in your body as a result of drinking alcohol is that number one, it depletes the vitamin B1 levels out of your liver. It can also increase fat stores inside your liver, which can lead to fatty liver disease. It can raise estrogen, which increases body fat, water retention, and increases the risk of cancer again, and lowers testosterone, which can reduce muscle tissue and slow down muscle recovery. Eventually, as the liver becomes more beat up and broken down, and the levels of acetylaldehyde keep rising in the body, your liver starts to form scar tissue, and this is when liver cirrhosis starts to set in. Now, there is some truth to the fact that drinking less is better for you. Obviously, if you consume less alcohol, your liver has less work to do, and you lessen the likelihood of disease or damage occurring. But the problem with continuously drinking over a long period of time is that if you are constantly ingesting alcohol and your liver is having to break down ethanol and acetylaldehyde constantly over years and years, eventually you start to deplete the enzymes in your liver that break them down. This can eventually lead to a buildup of ethanol in your liver. And that's when the body starts to produce scar tissue to protect the liver and that's what ultimately leads to liver cirrhosis and eventually liver failure. Now keep in mind that this doesn't happen overnight. It would take somebody around five to 10 years of consistent drinking, even in small amounts, to cause any significant damage. But one of the biggest problems with the liver is how tough and resilient of an organ it actually is. The liver doesn't actually let off a lot of symptoms early on, and it tends to go for years and years taking abuse and getting beat up without actually letting us know or letting us suffer from any side effects, external or internal. The problem with this is that somebody could consume alcohol or tobacco or pharmaceutical drugs for years and years and years, causing damage to their liver, but they'll never know because the symptoms and side effects are so few and far between. So some signs that you guys can look out for may include things like a swollen midsection or a belly that's pushing out forward. Sometimes when you have fatty buildup or scar tissue in the liver and the liver starts to swell, it can protrude the gut forward, coming off as a bare belly, when in actual fact, it could just be signs of early liver damage. There's also a medical condition called ascites, which can appear to look like a bare gut as well, but it's actually not fat or a belly. It's actually a buildup of fluid around your midsection as a result of a damaged liver. Some of the symptoms associated with ascites are things like swelling of the ankles, shortness of breath, digestive issues such as bloating, constipation, indigestion, and even back pain. And then some of the more common ones around liver damage and liver issues are things like arthritis or joint pain, jaundice or yellow coloring of the eyes or yellow coloring of the skin, and issues around unbalanced hormone levels, as damage to the liver can really offset a male or a female's hormone production. Now, obviously there are things that you can do to obviously lessen the likelihood of damaging your liver. For example, alcohols that have higher concentrations of alcohol or ethanol, alcoholic beverages that have higher concentrations of preservatives or artificial chemicals, and believe it or not, carbonated alcoholic drinks, because carbonated alcohol is actually a lot more difficult for your liver to break down than non-carbonated alcohol. Once the liver is damaged to a certain point and stops functioning completely, this puts pressure on the rest of the digestive system, where organs like the kidneys have to take over and start working harder to detoxify some of the leftover workload that the liver is no longer doing. When issues like this arise, it can sometimes put so much pressure on the kidneys that they start to break down and they start to experience their own set of problems. Overall, this upsets the entire digestive system and offsets your detoxification process in your body, leading to DNA damage, cell damage, 
inflammation, and the occurrence of cancer cells. And while we're on the topic of DNA damage, liver damage, and cancers, I'd like to point out that alcohol is not the only thing that can cause damage to the liver and the rest of the body. For example, sugar, in particular fructose sugar, which is equally as damaging to the liver as alcohol. Other things that can also damage your liver include genetically modified trans fats, which are usually found in junk foods or fatty foods that are deep fried, pharmaceutical drugs or medication abuse, and viruses. But the silver lining in all of this is that the liver happens to be one of the most repairable and regenerable organs in your body. So if you do experience any issues around your liver or liver damage, it is possible to repair it and potentially make a full recovery. As a matter of fact, up to 75% of your liver can be damaged and non-functioning, and your body has the ability to generate new tissue, new DNA, and bring your liver back to 100% recovery and full functionality. In episode three of this three-part video series on alcohol, I will be touching on some of the food and nutrition that you can use to not only repair your liver, but also to reduce alcohol cravings to lessen the likelihood of any future potential harm or damage. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comment section down below. Do you drink alcohol? Or does anybody in your family drink alcohol? And have you guys had or experienced any adverse health effects as a result of doing so? Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, I'm always up for a discussion and I will reply to each and every single one of you. And if you found this video helpful or you've gotten some value out of the information that I've given to you guys, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to Ventura Nutrition as we've got part three and the finale of this three-part video series coming out next week. Make sure you subscribe so that you guys don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll catch you on episode three of our alcohol fun facts.